Okay, we're going to talk about cystic fibrosis and consanguinity and how that relates, why we should be thinking about that. So first of all, cystic fibrosis, also known as CF, is an autosomal recessive disease. And this means that you need both alleles in order for that gene to be expressed. Uh, so um, we can think about the diseased homozygotes, and in, in which case they would be 1 out of 2,000, and the carriers or heterozygotes would be 1 out of 22. Diseased homozygotes would be those that people who have identical alleles of the gene. So cystic fibrosis, when we think about that, we must think about the CFTR uh, a gene um, on chromosome 7. Q31 or 7. This is called by, caused by mutations in, um, CF is caused by mutations in the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator gene, also known as CFTR on the chromosome 7. And clinical symptoms include pancreatic insufficiency and pulmonary infections. So basically, think about the gut and the lungs, but uh, more specifically, uh, the pancreas and the lungs, uh, and even more detail, um, you would see uh, multi-organ system manifestations of uh, CF. For example, secondary biliary cirrhosis, malabsorption in the gut, uh, meconium ileus for newborns, and obstructive vas deference, deference uh, which would lead to sterility, and abnormal sweat electrolytes. And remember that to uh, in uh, diagnosing CF, you use the uh, the sweat test, and you can see that the, the sweat is you know very very salty, or well, the skin is very very salty. Uh, chronic pancreatitis, uh, lub lung uh, abscesses, chronic bronchitis, uh, bronchio um, atastasis, and honeycomb lung. So. Um, a lot of problems from CF and uh, of course the main thing we want to take from this is the CFTR function which regulates the flow of chloride ions across the cell membranes. Remember the flow of chloride ions is affected by the CFTR function. We're talk going to talk more about uh, CF in the future but remember about the probabilities of uh, this gene being expressed and uh, think about what the probability um, that the, a pregnancy will lead to uh, CF being expressed in an unaffected uh, child. So basically, as I said before, uh, when you have two heterozygous uh, parents, uh, maternal and paternally, you're going to have a quarter of uh, of the uh, the possibilities of having an unaffected non-carrier and then one quarter of them or 25 percent would be affected and then half of them or two out of four uh, would be an unaffected carrier which would be just like the parents heterozygous or autosomal recessive for the gene so let's think a bit more about cystic fibrosis and uh, we should also note that uh, two-thirds of normal siblings of, of a recessive child um, are heterozygous. And uh, one other thing we should consider is consanguinity. Why is this important? Because this consanguin some consanguinity, as you remember, refers to a relationship between by the descent from a common ancestor. We're talking about inbreeding here or incest. And uh, this is a concern for those with autosomal recessive disorders. It means it's more likely to be expressed. Um, this is a, you know, in a rare disease, uh, due to infrequent alleles, the disease will occur more commonly in ind individuals whose parents are related. So, uh, less likely in first cousin mating or second cousin matings. But anyway. Um, the closer you get to your family, uh, the more likely you, you are to express that recessive gene. Um, an example of that may be, for example, in phenyl uh, ketonuria. Um, so 
So studies of, of offspring of incestuous matings indicate that everyone carries at least 8 to 10 mutant alleles from well-known autosomal recessive orders, which is pretty scary. However, the offspring of first cousin marriages are only at twice the risk of abnormal offspring compared to the general population. So they say, um, you know, there is a, a higher possibility, but still you find that cousins do marry each other, and, and sometimes you see a problem, and sometimes you don't. But these are, uh, you know, you can calculate the probabilities, and this is why we have this genetic counseling, and it's becoming more and more common. Uh, just a few things about consanguinity. Um, measure of consanguinity is relevant uh, because the risk of a child being homozygous for a rare allele is proportional to how related the parents are. And the coefficient of inbreeding um, is the probability that an individual has received both alleles at a locus from an ancestral source, which equals the proportion of loci identical by descent from the common ancestor. So, um, for a first cousin, for example, there would be a 1 in 16 chance. So this is a good thing to remember. Inbreeding coefficient of the proband is 1 out of 16, uh, so that's a 60% chance of being homozygous by descent for any locus. Um, but uh, let's see, uh, when you get uh, a little further down, for a second cousin mating, for example, then uh, there would be a 1 in 64 or 1.56% chance. So in any case, this is a very important thing to think about. Thank you very much.